Crow has his best pigeon day of the year. Not hard if you think about it. We have news with a loose-limbed lamper and hunting YouTube. First, I'm in the heart of Devon High Pheasant country, looking for the wildest and weirdest beater in the UK. It's a deer. This is Owen, a deer, joining guns at the Mornicott shoot for a drink between drives. Yes, a deer who likes shooting. Here's the shoot owner. Yes, well, Owen was found caught up in, uh, in some barbed wire by the, by the boys in one of the top fields. Uh, they untangled him, but uh, Mother wanted nothing to do with him, having smelt uh, of, uh, of them, and uh, who can blame her. Um, we brought him in and, uh, and fed him on used milk, and uh, he won't, uh, won't go away now. He sort of hangs around quite a bit and uh, is there uh, on quite a few of the shoot days. He's, but, not, uh, he's not gun shy, is he? He's not gun shy at all, no. In fact, the, we had the hunt over the other week, and uh, he was running in front of the hounds, sort of thinking, this is fun. <laughs> Thankfully, they were after Heinz. <laughs> he takes part uh, on a, a number of occasions, joins the beating line several times. He's joined the guns at break as well. So uh, during the rut, it was a bit interesting because he got a little bit uh, amorous with uh, with one or two people. But uh, he's uh, he's calmed down a bit now. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens as he grows and develops. But. Uh, for now a worthy addition. So our mission today is to see if we can find Owen, or if Owen can find us. Well that's part of our mission, we're also out to have a lovely day's pheasant shooting on what is one of Exmoor's outstanding shoots. Andrew starts the day with an excellent breakfast and a briefing. Then we head into countryside that could win an award from the Flying Pheasant Federation if pheasants had a federation for flying. The estate manager is another Owen, Charles Owen. After the deer. Well the deer's after me I suppose. Yeah. First drive is called Holly Tree. It's a long bank with guns arranged below a cover crop. We haven't tried it for a while. I think it went very well. We're extremely flashy at this time of year. So it's sort of everybody, all the guns creep into position. And as soon as the shot, this first shot is fired, look out. So. The guns find the shooting here challenging. On the ones that were going back, way over the top of the trees, yeah. you know, little tiny things. Yes. But it, but this, and I, it I just hair that waved the gun about 12, 15 feet in front of it, and it went poof and came down. Yeah. I was saying Sputnik. The next drive, Whitechapel, produces sudden birds. No sign of Owen, but with these pheasants, who needs an extra four-legged beater? Well, that was very successful. Whitechapel is interesting because it's a drive where you can't see any beaters, you can't see any flaggers, you can't see anything coming. The birds just appear over the brow of the hill is quite fun. And then we're going on now to do um, Clover Down, which is one of our sort of signature drives, but we're going to do it out the back because the pheasants have learned to fly out the back of the crops and we thought, right, stand the guns behind the farmhouse and take them back over the farmhouse. Charles has produced 30 days of shooting on Mornicott this year with and without Owen's help. He and Andrew created the shoot six years ago. So what does the future look like? I think it'll get much bigger than 30, it then becomes a little bit commercial and not really where we want to be. So. 30 is a nice number and everybody gets fed up with it. <laughs> I think what we'll probably do is we'll keep to 30 days, um, but probably up the bag sizes slightly. So we do a few hundred and 150 bird days, we'll probably hope to sort of phase those out and do sort of minimum of 200, maybe a few hundred and fifties in January. Same number of days, but more birds. Andrew has built comfortable accommodation for a whole team of guns here. We had seven years of builders and uh, last year was our first year when we had uh, guests staying overnight. People can roll out of the shoot room at, late at night without having to worry about drinking and uh, spend the night then come in for breakfast in the morning before shooting. So uh, yeah, it works very well. Teams of beaters and pickers up. If you looked at all the building works we've had done, I think we worked out building work wise. We've done nine full-time employees for a full year on the building works and this, that and the other. And then, uh, Obviously the beating teams, picking up teams, keeper, you know, various other people who help out in the, in the catering and the, uh, the preparing things and the overnight accommodation. So at least a dozen full-time equivalents, I would think. Uh, not as yet, I'm afraid, no. No, but time will tell. We're going up to the Owen direction now. So. The drives continue, the guns stop for a drink and they clearly like what they're getting today. They especially like Andrew. Well, it's all those virtues that we, we all wish we had, isn't it? It's, um, <clears throat> you know, delightful personality, exemplary leadership, ruthless efficiency, and bloody nice with it. The last drive, the hangar, is spectacular, with pheasants coming over the top of a high wood. So did everything go according to plan? Uh, as much as anything ever goes according to plan on a shoot day. Well, I think everybody's had some fun, and that's really what today's been about.
to book shooting at Mornicott, go to mornicott.co.uk. And what about Owen? No, no not today. He's uh, obviously taken the day off, but I hope we'll see him in a day or two and uh, back, uh, back in the line next year with good luck. Now, before we leave pheasant shooting, we are once again in the unusual position of having an advertisement from a cartridge company. Here it is. Thank you to all at Mornicott and good luck to Owen wherever you are. Right from deer with no fear to a man with no plan. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stuff. This is Field Sports Channel News. A gamekeeper has been caught on camera by the RSPB killing a goshawk. George Much from Aberdeenshire has become the first Scottish gamekeeper to be jailed for killing birds of prey. Much denied recklessly killing or injuring a goshawk and illegally taking away another two raptors, but was earlier found guilty of all four charges in the case at Aberdeen Sheriff Court. He was sentenced to four months on each charge, with the sentences to run concurrently. Since 2000, just 20 gamekeepers have been found guilty of raptor persecution. It's the start of the 2015 SHOT Show in Vegas and among the new kit, there's the Winchester Budget XPR rifle. A couple of the key features, it has a bolt release right here so that you can leave it on safety and then just push that to let the bolt out so that you're loading and unloading the rifle in a safe position. When you're ready to shoot, you just push the safety forward. Another Winchester story this week, an archeologist have found a 132 year old rifle propped up against a tree. It's a 44 40 caliber model 1873, manufactured in 1882. It was leaning against a juniper tree in Nevada. Nobody knows how it got there, nor whether it had been there all that time, though its base had turned gray and was partially buried. There's lots of research out this week. According to Natural England, field sports generate 10 million visits a year to the English countryside while fishing generated another 14 million visits. Meanwhile, a distribution map of Basque's membership of more than 140,000 shows people who take part in shooting sports live in a city, town, coast and countryside and dispels any myth about shooting being a solely rural issue. Our own research is throwing up some surprising results which we will report in February and our survey is now available in Spanish, German and French. Links are on the screen. If you haven't taken part, please do, and please tell your friends. Now a Texas county has come up with a novel way to try and reduce their hog numbers. The Wise County Hog Hunting Contest, which now covers the whole of Texas, aims to help get rid of the hogs and give a little bit of bragging rights as well. The biggest hog wins 50% of the entry fees, which are $110 per team. If you live in Texas, take part at bit.ly forward slash hog contest. And finally, Field Sports Britain's Got Talent. This is Anthony Champ who posted the dance of the frustrated fox shooter on Facebook forum Lamping Foxes. He's certainly throwing some impressive shapes and at this time of year, it's a great way to keep warm. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Right, Andy's with Dom and the Pigeons and Little Crow thinks he's won a quarter of a million. If anyone needs a manicure, it's Andy. He's just not moisturising like he used to. But he doesn't care for such things. He's too busy driving tractors and stuff what like farmers do. And of course, shooting. Today he's out on a rape field with Dom, who isn't a stranger to a regime of moisturising and toning. This young crop has been attracting quite a bit of attention from passing shooters. As Andy has let the numbers build, so has the number of interested parties wondering if they can get permission to shoot it. It seems that everyone wants a piece of the action, and who can blame them? 
been nice seeing this uh, 4500 pigeons lump up on this bit of rake. It's been getting quite exciting. All the pigeon shooters around here have been seeing them come here. They've been sitting on the fence watching and been asking if they can go. And I feel bad saying no, but that's the way it is. I, I need to save some for myself. See, it's symptomatic of the fact that over the, probably the last year, the pigeon shooting hasn't been quite as productive as maybe in the previous couple of years. That you've got a lot of pigeon shooters that are looking for that big bag day, and, and those big bag days just aren't around in this area. No, it's just, I don't know what it is about the South East the last, I don't know, two, three years. But yeah, the pigeons just haven't been down here. There's a bit of ground I shoot over near Brands Hatch where we shot hundreds, well, thousands of pigeons up there um, about three years ago, and it was, you could go up there any time and have 50, 30s, 40s, but we've shot nothing up there in the last two years. Whatever the reason for fewer woodies, a change in farming practices is likely to disperse them even further. The new rules that have come in now, you have to grow three crops. Um, when, did, when did that? That come in the, this, this year. year. Yeah, this is it's starting this year, so. And so you're not allowed to have a kind of monoculture on the farm, you have to have some diversity. Yeah, you do. You've got to have uh, uh, three crops. They hinder me with the with the pigeon shoot, but a lot of people around this area have put uh, beans in, gone for winter beans or spring beans. So, good thing was with beans, they're cut later, they're the last crop cut, and you can usually get some good days on it. With bangers on neighbouring fields, Crow is keeping the birds moving and building a reasonable bag. Well, that's, that's the last one I just shot. It's got nothing in it at all. So, well, it dries by. They're in good condition as well, considering how well, that one is. That might end up getting eaten with some chips. When there's a lull in the action, Andy shows us the moment Baby Crow thought he'd won a quarter of a million pounds on a scratch card given to him by his loving sister. It was, however, a fake. Some may say cruel, others hilarious. Back to business and the birds are decoying well, but he's had to manage the day and the pattern, keeping one step ahead of the birds and the conditions. Early on we had a lot of, uh, there was about three or four big groups come round, we didn't bother shooting at them, we just let them go. I don't like to shoot the big, big groups, just educates them and just and puts them on their toes straight away, so let them split up and shoot the smaller groups. Is there anything you you think we, we might have done differently in terms of where we set up or you know what, what kind of pattern you've used to, no, to kind of improve the result or i've got a, a new whirly there well it's not that old for may one um i usually put tape all the way down all the way down the arms but i just happened to grab that one this morning i didn't grab my normal one and uh I haven't got tape on my arms so the old arms were shining a bit this morning when we, we had a shower of rain didn't we yeah a bit of rain and they were shining like mirrors, so uh, turned the whirly off for a bit. Um, then the wing got up a bit and clouded over, so that's when I whacked the whirly back on and seen it work dividends. It, it worked really well. At the final count, Andy has 70 birds, and we can safely say it's his biggest and first bag of 2015. Poor baby crow, he could have been travelling the world with all that money. Instead, he'll have to see what's out there on hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. An awful lot of this year's SHOT Show is themed tactical and AR-15. In my roundup of the best video reviews from the American Gun Show, I'm after anything that passes for sporting shotguns and rifles. And here's one. Benelli launches its first over and under the sleek and modern H28U in 12 gauge. This is Kentucky Gun Company's take on it. Remington's V3 shotgun, here reviewed by Ontario Out of Doors, is a new semi-auto. It is billed as the Big Green's update of its Versamax action with newly 
design bolt assembly and trigger assembly. So with Benelli, the well-known semi-auto manufacturer offering an over and under and Remington, the noted pump action manufacturer, out with a semi-auto, it stands to reason that Winchester is pumping out a pump. Here is Winchester's own film, What We Like About the SXP, in exactly one minute by American exhibition shooters the Gould Brothers. On to rifles and the Savage Scout rifle built on the Model 10 platform was on show at Boulder Rifle Club where the SHOT Show's media day takes place. Gloomily named YouTube channel The Late Boy Scout tries it out in 308. Clearly planning a trip to Africa after the Big Five, NRA Pub's editor-in-chief J. Scott Olmsted stops by the Mauser booth to give the Mauser M98 Magnum a go. This is one of the few films on YouTube to feature a European gun. Ontario Out of Doors is back to look at the Ruger Hawkeye FTW Predator rifle. Combining the trigger and action of the Hawkeye Predator with the adjustable buttstock design of the Gunsight Scout rifle, it launches in 308 and 6.5 Creedmoor. Savage has brought out a new semi-auto for rabbits and foxes, claiming it has solved the problem of cycling 17HMR ammo through an auto loader. Field and Stream's Brad Fenson takes a look. Remember, some of these guns won't be in shops outside the US for a long time, and others not at all. Where the motor trade comes up with concept cars that will never be built, the gun trade likes to build guns that will never be sold. But you can look and enjoy. For popularity, our pals at gunglass.com are winning the ratings war on YouTube with their coverage of SHOT Show so far. This is their take on the media day. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film, you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight send it in via youtube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well if you don't like any of those perhaps you'll like fishing britain it's back martin salter of the angling trust takes over where howell morgan left off in september and he's out to find out about carp not 100 pound monsters but lovely little crucian carp how to fish for them and where to find them that's not all. Krista Margri has salmon fishing tips if you're on a lock. There's news and there is Hooked on YouTube. Click on the link on the screen. Thanks for watching. We're back next week. Please subscribe. Please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact box and we will constantly contact you about Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.